Coming up, the new Rosecraft Blades Cane Creek Jack. I finally get my hands on a Microtech stitch, even for just a fleeting moment. And then 10 great automatic knives. This is an update. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, two favorite comments from this past week. The first one from Herview85. LMFAO, James Brand's new Barnes $600 recycled material knife, reminds me of when Mora came out with their Ashwood handle knives. And uh, they put a big head exploding there. I didn't I didn't add that. But yeah, when when Mora did that, their their knives jumped up by like a factor of te- of uh, what was it? They went from like $30 knives to $100 knives. And this this is kind of similar, you know, they're making a $600 knife with recycled handle material it does look cool and it is um it is you know it's a nice material it's a great looking knife and it's a great knife but uh it reminds me a little bit of tyler durden selling women back their own liposuctioned body fat by making them soap all right next up uh richard mcginnis 5344 says uh if okay now let me let me just preface this next comment by saying i i will never stop commenting about the buoy bowie thing and uh richard mcginnis says here if you're saying buoy it's wrong uh as you wouldn't say as you wouldn't have said david buoy you say it's bowie you wouldn't tell someone you bought a new compound boo would you <laughs> and then uh no one ever called them buoy knives when i was young it was a thing that began in the early 80s in the 70s everyone knew how to say it so let's uh so let it go. <laughs> you had it right the first time. I love that. Let it go. Richard, I can't let it go. This is this is part of my, um, I mean, this is in genetics as far as I'm concerned. Uh, beating a dead horse runs in the family. Uh, so you're going to have to put up with it a little bit longer. But soon I will stop calling attention to it. And I will be, um, what do you call it? Like multilingual. And I'll start saying buoy, bowie uh, in, in, uh, in turn, without uh, bringing attention to it, I do must say uh, I was talking about people talking about this issue with people in the South and they cl- in uh, Texas, and they claimed they always say uh, always said it, uh, Bowie. So, man, uh, the drama continues, and we'll check back in another time. All that said, let's get to a pocket check. In my front right pocket today, I had the Monterey Bay Knives Turbo designed by Peter Carey. Um, I haven't carried this one in a little while, um, but Peter Carey has been posting a lot of his incredibly beautiful and ornate customs, custom tacticals that he's going to be bringing uh, to a Blade Show and uh, Blade Show, what is it, Texas, I guess. And uh, they had me drooling. So I was like, wait, I have a Peter Carey knife. I should carry it more often and this one doesn't look like your average monterey bay knives uh turbo because it's been customized by um the knife modders you can see there it's got an acid stonewash blade and a high voltage green handle i wanted it to look a bit like that uh patina you see on the statue of liberty and i think they did a beautiful job i i just said go nuts with the backspacer and the pocket clip and they did a beautiful sort of uh nebula thing here like if i polish that up it starts to get real swirly and colorful there we go finally focus and they did the same thing on the clip i don't like it on the clip of a it's sort of worn off and b i should have just said make the clip match the blade because i don't like shiny clips i don't know why uh, i would have agreed to that it was a a moment of weakness or something well i said go crazy i didn't know what they were going to come up with basically so i'm going to send that clip back to them and have them uh, uh, do a dark tumble on it and uh, i i know i'll carry this more uh with that but listen i mean just check out the action on this it's it's really you know it's the epitome of that fall shut action now i claim that you don't have to have fall shut action and uh, and great deployment or or whippy deployment 
to be fidgety. I find, uh, I find that a back lock can be fidgety. I find that uh, slip joint can be fidgety, but I got to say for that drop shut action, this is one of the best in my collection. Next up in my left pocket, just banging around, I had a Victorinox Tinker on me today. This is that Bigfoot edition I got from uh, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Um, this is a, an exclusive knife with them. And, um, you know, I'm kind of a Sabe Sasquatch nerd. I think it's a cool topic. I love hearing people's stories about it. Um, I think it uh, ignites something inside that that likes to think that there's other stuff out there that we just don't know about. I'm sure of that. I just don't know what shape it takes or what shape they take. Uh, one thing I love about the Tinker is the screwdriver. Of course, it also has the uh, all. I didn't use this for anything today, but it was my slip joint of choice. Uh, my fixed blade today, I did not carry. Um, I did not carry this fixed blade, but I had it in my bag. This is the Station 9 sear and it is one of my it has become one of my favorite clip point blades at this blade i just i love it it's so thin and it, it slices really well and the point is ridiculously stabby and then overall it has a very nice profile reminds me a little bit of a mac v sog though it does not have those uh two humps on the top of a mac v sog it has the swedge that goes all the way back to the Ricasso, and that's a signature uh, of the of the Mac V Sog uh, buoy, and I think it's really cool. Uh, here we have this uh, contoured G10 uh, handle scales; uh, they're on slabs, and you have the full quillions. So this is a true full tang blade with the quillions, also the the guards here, um, which I really like. And then you have this bit. The guys who designed this are French. Uh, Station Nine is a French company and they have a lot of uh, well they have a collaborative knife with Fred Perrin but they also take a lot of inspiration from Fred Perrin's designs and I feel like you can see this here even though this has the double guard something you'll never see uh, on a um, on a, a Fred Perrin knife you do have the blade that's wider than the pinch point at the finger choil here so that even if you didn't have these guards here you would have a, a wider blade than handle up at the Ricasso, and that would act as the guard. And I love that feature, and I think it uh, I think it works great here. I mean, it's like overkill here, which is awesome. I put two uh, Ranger bands on my handles, and honestly, I'll tell you why. I saw it because Tony Lopez, the guy who designed this knife, I believe, uh, has them on his. And so I put them on just to see how, how it would feel. And actually, it draws out of the sheath you know, easier, it's grippier. Uh, this, I have a tech lock on the sheath and wear this edge forward on my belt, uh, but I haven't figured out how to integrate this into my daily carry. It's a little little big for that, but popping it in the bag and having it on me is uh, makes me feel like I have it with me anyway. All right, last up for emotional support today, my emotional sport knife, my ESK, is the Brazen by Civivi. Tonto, total random choice. I wanted a button lock today, and uh, I've had, I've been, um, you know, playing around a lot with my, uh, what is it, the Sencut Arc Blast, and I wanted to stay in the Civivi line, but, uh, or in that Wii umbrella, and I wanted a different shape blade, because I have two bellied blades here, one a drop point, one a clip point, and then, of course, the blade on the Victorinox is the same, so I wanted a different shape blade, like a Warncliffe or a Tonto. And so I chose the brazen. Very, very nice knife. I used to have this in the frame lock. I gave that away either to my brother or to Ian. I can't remember who. And, uh, but this has a nice uh, thickness to it. It's a, uh, it's, it feels like it's a little over. Let me see. Ah, I don't have my measuring instruments here. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's got to be 0.6 inches wide. It's got a, a just a little bit of a chunkier grip, and really nice ergonomics. And look at that pommel. That pommel is ideal for wrapping the thumb around if you need to, you know, jam this into something um, and back it up with the thumb. Great deep carry pocket clip. Very nice looks and stupendous action on this knife. Oh, I didn't even notice this. Look, this is all green. Unintentional. You got this electric green and these two olive drabs. This with a little more blue in it, which I like. Um, 
So that was my carry. It was matchy matchy, but I did not intend it to be. What did you have on you? Let me know. Drop it in the comments. Um, I always like to find out what what the fine listeners and viewers of this show carry and uh, gives me inspiration. All right. So next up, let's talk about the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway. Uh, that's coming up um, on Thursday night, February 15th. The day after today, which is Valentine's Day. You notice I'm wearing a red shirt. Uh, people used to say it's a Hallmark holiday. I say, if there's a holiday that celebrates love, why not go for it? Hallmark or not. Uh, this is what we're giving away in the next Gentleman Junkie Knife giveaway. Uh, so this is the off-grid knives uh, Grizzly. This is the camp and kitchen knife. It's got a nice thin blade stock, very wide, full flat ground. So it's like, it's like a laser. It's so thin. It's, it is very much like a chef's knife. Um, and it, in terms of its geometry, uh, it is a chef's knife. It's just wearing a tactical coat. Uh, this is the knife, not this one in particular, um, but this is the knife that we bring when we go up to our mountain place. And uh, it, that is a timeshare place. So we, are, uh, you know, they have all great kitchen stuff except for the cutlery because it must have been stolen a million times. So they have this crappy Ginsu. I mean, it's not even Ginsu. It doesn't even rise to Ginsu. So we bring our own cutlery naturally. And this is what we've brought the last, I don't know, three or four years. Uh, first the Grizzly one and now this improved Grizzly two. Uh, just a great knife, super sharp. And even though they don't recommend it, the manufacturer that is, Off Grid Knives, you can totally chop down saplings and stuff with this. You just don't want to baton it. It's a little, gets a little thin and it's D2, or, oh, this is 14C. Even better. I forgot. That's part of the improvement. Uh, the first one was D2. And then you got the taco sheath, great sheath, uh, excellent retention and a drop down uh, with the Velcro and the snap so that you don't have to take off your belt to don it. All right. That's what we're uh, giving away. That's for those of you who are Patreon uh, patrons at the Gentleman Junkie uh, level. We do once a month, we do this uh, knife giveaway. Go over on, <laughs> go on over, <laughs> excuse me, go on over to Patreon, uh, the knife junkie.com slash Patreon, or scan the QR code on the screen and check out uh, what we have to offer in, in, uh, in 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 uh, giving back when you give to us it's greatly appreciated thank you for helping us keep the lights on all right coming up knife life news we're gonna talk about three new knives out there in the market and then some exciting news from washington state among this week's specials at knives ship free the bark river bravo pig sticker knife is built from 154 cm stainless steel designed to dispatch wild boars and feral pigs it's tough and ready for anything if you're a collector a hunter or just need something for protection this knife is for you the lt right patriot is an affordable usa made fixed blade that's perfect for edc or a companion on hiking and hunting excursions these are back in stock with durable micarta handle scales, and they come with a leather sheath, and the Spiderco smock is in stock. This design features a low-profile flipper tab and a unique CPM S30V blade secured by a push-button compression lock. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, theknifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. That's theknifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. Theknifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Coming from Best Tech, uh, brand new from Best Tech is a fixed blade. And you know I love fixed blades and you know I love Best Tech. So this one's kind of exciting also because it's really cool looking and I think offers an opportunity for customization. Uh, this is the Best Tech VK Core uh, collaboration with custom knife maker Steven Kempa out of Berlin, Deutschland. Uh, Volpex Blades, Volpex Knives is his company. And uh, this knife here is to me, very, very fetching because you have a beautiful worn cliff blade on, on a straight and neutral handle, but you have right where the pinch point is between the finger and the thumb, you have a slight angle change 
and level change, uh, which will keep your knuckles out of the way of that cutting path pretty well. Uh, also, just just uh, as you, if you're watching, if you can see here, there's a cool little flourish uh, that Stephen Kempa puts on his knives, and it's an inlaid copper stud there. You can see it right near the Best Tech logo. And by the way, when you stick that in the sheath, there's a hole there that actually showcases that. Uh, so this is a production take on his custom model, and it's a 3.2 inch Warncliffe 14C28N and uh, no scales. That's where I say you have uh, room for customization. Uh, you've got a number of holes there that you could uh, put some sort of mechanical connection through like pins or screws, and uh, you could come up with your own um, scales for this knife. Uh, you would have to probably repress a Kydex sheath to accommodate the new scales, but I love that. I, I'm not a huge fan of skeletonized uh, handles like this, but I am a huge fan of blades like this. So I could see this as being a, a cool project knife. Uh, 2.7 ounces Kydex sheath. Uh, this will be available the end of February, 2024. So coming up here real soon. All right, next up, uh, the Spyderco Mule Team. That's their, that's Spyderco's um, kind of test platform knife. It's a hand, it's a scale-free full tang fixed blade knife that they uh, put out. They've done, I think, 40 so far. I believe this, this most recent one is the 40th one. And uh, they, they test all, not test, it's a test bed for all the different steels they go through. So you can find this Mule Team in all the steels that Spyderco uses. This is out of high impact ceramic, which uh, is a brand new thing for Spyderco. And it's kind of cool, kind of exciting. Now, we all know that uh, ceramic, uh, which we've seen ceramic blades advertised uh, for kitchen knives, uh, extremely, extremely sharp, uh, gets extremely sharp and has incredible edge retention. But it's ceramic, it's brittle, you know? I mean, you use ceramic to sharpen steel. It's harder than steel, uh, but you can't do all the things that require toughness uh, that you can do with steel. So uh, the, to come close to remedying that, uh, they add zirconium uh, to give it higher toughness. That, that's where my technical knowledge about uh, high impact ceramic ends. But the addition of zirconium makes it somewhat tougher. Uh, but you're not, if you're someone who buys these mule teams and you like to uh, put handles on them and test them out and use them. You're going to want to be uh, still going to want to be cautious with this, uh, with any sort of impact or torquing um, motion. Uh, we talked about this with um, with uh, Mr. Janich, Michael Janich, who's on the show, and uh, he's excited about this material, but does warn that uh, you can't do some of the things you can do with regular steel. Uh, to sharpen this, Blade, you're going to have to use diamond or cubic boron nitrate sharpening tools. I like saying cubic boron nitrate. I don't know what that is, but it's got to be harder than ceramic, uh, just like diamond. This is currently available, so uh, if this is up your alley, go for it. All right, last up in terms of new knives, uh, the Civivi Cubit uh, was a huge fan favorite. Um, I know Jared uh, says that was one of his favorite knives uh, of the year and his favorite Civivi last year. Uh, same with so all of our trusted voices love this knife. Well, uh, we knife heard and said, wouldn't it be great if we made this into a premium edition? So uh, they have uh, iterated this in uh, premium materials. That's a titanium button lock, a slightly longer blade, 3.2 inches as opposed to 2.89 inches of the Civivi. Uh, this has 20 CV blade steel. Oh, so by the way, you won't be able to swap blades or do any. There will be no chicanery between uh, we and Civivi there, uh, Cubits. But uh, this one is coming soon. I have seen a number of videos uh, on it, and it's it looks uh, pretty cool. Now, one complaint I've heard, uh, well, not a complaint, a nitpick, I would say, is that it uses the same off-the-shelf uh, clip that the we we Civivi line uses. Like if you go to Amazon and buy one of their milled titanium pocket clips, um, first of all, it's not going to fit on an, every knife. I learned that the hard way. Uh, but also it's going to look exactly like the clip that's on this expensive premium knife. So I, I get it. I get it. You want to think that there's a slight difference or that there's some sort of, uh, you know, uh, 
Well, just a slight difference. So this is coming soon. Keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, a, a huge fan favorite, as I said. Okay, last up, some exciting news from Knife Rights and wa in Washington State. I'm just going to uh, briefly read just these top two paragraphs uh, uh, from Knife Rights. Washington Senate passes spring blade ban repeal. House up next. Uh, so here it says, your emails helped to make it happen. The Washington Senate just passed knife rights bill that would repeal Washington's ban on quote unquote spring blade, that's automatic knives, SB 5860 with a bipartisan vote of 45 to three. So three buzz kills out there in Washington were like, no. Uh, that's not in the article. We sincerely appreciate our good friend, Sil uh, Senator Phil Fortunato, for his efforts shepherding the bill through the Senate. We know from speaking to our sponsor that your hundreds of emails over the course of the last month made a huge difference. Enjoy this success, but be prepared. It will take similar efforts to get this house, uh, this bill through the House. So uh, very exciting news from Knife Rights. I always love to see these uh, victories. Uh, I got some pretty um, some pretty urgent emails, I'm sure we all did, uh, from Knife Rights. So uh, good on everyone for responding. The people in Washington uh, now get to, well, now get one step closer to a, a spring blade ban repeal. So that's good stuff. And so is Knife Rights. So consider uh, going to Knife Rights and dropping them a dime or two. All right, coming up here, we're going to get to some uh, state of the collection. I got six new knives here to show you, and uh, two of them are on loan, and they're sweet little honeys. So let's get to it right after this break. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super-sharp crenulated bezel, and built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash Shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Okay, so this behemoth here. Oh, I don't know if you even heard that open. It just uh, hurt my ears. This is the Olight Century L1. This giant, beautiful cleaver uh, was gifted to me by good friend Fernando Salome, good friend of the show, and he's uh, always on Thursday Night Knives. I want to thank you, Fernando, so much for this. This is such an awesome knife. And what I love about this, uh, this is kind of like my Leatherman tool. Um, the first one I ever got. It was a bummer when I got it because I, I knew my brother got me a knife, but I was hoping it was like a switchblade or something really aggro. And uh, he gave me a Leatherman. And I was like, oh, this is cool. And I've used that thing ever since for 30 years. I love that. This is also a knife I wouldn't have gotten myself because I tend to think I don't like cleavers. But this this uh, this sort of goes above and beyond cleaver to me. Um, I love that blade shape. It reminds me of a a... a it reminds me a bit of a cleaver you would see hanging in a meat market if it had a hole there, uh, but just beautiful shape and an incredible slicer. Wow. Uh, this is a nearly two inch broad blade up here at the peak, and it's about an inch and a inch and an eighth um, saber grind here. So it's super, 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 super keen and sharp down here uh, on the edge. So very, very nice knife. Menacing as the day is long, I think. And, you know, I like that. I, I don't find many cleaver blades too menacing. I think the lack of point does it for, for me on most knives. But this, uh, to me, is, is, is pretty awesome. Fernando and his son both carry this knife. Uh, to me, the, blade, the handle is for a slightly larger hand than the one I have, unless I, unless I hold this in a sort of um, saber grip like this. If I have a hammer grip, I can feel these peaks. Uh, on the finger, uh, but tch, no matter. Uh, this is D2 and rockets out on bearings. Awesome knife. Uh, o light slash O knife, man. They they make some just really really cool knives. A great quality. Uh, I I'm not sure who makes them for them, but they are spectacular. All right, next up, this one. Speaking of spectacular, this is the new one from Rosecraft Blades. And I'm so excited about this knife. I've been carrying it a lot. Let me rub this down a little bit. 
Okay, so um, this is the first Rosecraft blades in their traditional line with G10. And uh, I'm really liking it. Uh, that sort of pattern there with, um, you see, what is it? Uh, orange, red, and then a black or dark, dark green down the middle. It's really nice. And it's got a Coke bottle shape. So you've got this um, bulge out here with the pin going through it. That allows you more space in the blade well to have a blade sink in there. And you can see that this clip point blade is uh, has a nice big belly and a huge aggressive swedge. So uh, in order to get this all in there discreetly, it makes sense to have this have that Coke bottle swell in the center. Um, so you have a nice flat uh, blade well in there. So this knife is inspired by uh, Sheffield knives. And uh, I think that's interesting because whereas this one here, the Lusahatchee Jack is also um, inspired by British Barlow knives and Barlow blades. So I'm liking this uh, direction Rosecraft Blades is taking. Um, and, and, and I say that not as an expert. I'm, I'm sort of catching up to Rosecraft. <clears throat> I, I'm starting to amass a good little uh, sub-collection, and I'm starting to really get their, um, their design sense. And I love it. I love it. Um, and as far as the modern style slip joints go, that is using a stop pin instead of the kick on the, on the back spring, I think the Rosecraft are my favorites. Uh, I do like QSP a lot. But this is just, these Rosecrafts are really uh, floating my boat. So I love the the uh, only marking here is on that back bolster. That's a unique flourish. You don't see that often. Usually it's on the front bolster and on the blade or something like that. But a nice, nice, nice knife. Love this. And uh, I got to say, from the pictures, I thought it was larger. I'm glad it's not a huge knife. Here, let me put it next to the Lusahatchee Jack real quick. Makes it real easy to carry, and it's very light. That G10 also makes it pretty light. So there you go. All right, next up here. This one is on loan from Tier 1. Justin, you know Justin. Uh, Justin Carvin, and he is one half of DC Blades. This is his scythe. We've seen the scythe here quite a bit. But this is the titanium version. This is the premium version made by Shielden with S35VN blade steel and a gorgeously con uh, contoured titanium handle. Get some focus up here. And we can see that you've got that nice reverse tuxedo look. That's a black blade with a lighter colored handle. Uh, this is a sort of blasted titanium. It's a little darker than a raw, and it is gorgeous to look at. Uh, this is a uh, titanium backspacer, and it's got the, the whole gear pattern and jimping all the way up around the top so that your thumb really gets great purchase. Uh, obviously, this is a Pakal style blade, so you're going to, uh, the intended purpose of this knife, the main intended purpose of this knife is to be held, uh, is for self defense with that tip down and that edge in. And having all of that jimping on the back strap and on the pommel especially is key. I love that. I love that. Your fingers, you don't want your fingers slipping on this knife. Very, very sharp. And, and this, uh, Jared Neve had this before me. And he, you can, I can see he put it through its paces here. So I will feel free to do the same. Maybe I should do it on some meat. He promised and never delivered. I will, I will, I will one of these days. Look at that. Great action on this. Shield and knives um, for a long, long time was strictly uh, OEM and doing a great job. And then recently decided, why don't we put our name on it? We do it, we do an awesome job anyway. May as well like show the world. Uh, okay, next up. This is another one on loan. This is from my good friend Jock from Across the Shock. Jock's Knives, uh, you know him from Instagram. He will sometimes buy stuff and have it shipped to me so I get to check it out, and then I send it along to him. Uh, this is the Microtech Stitch, a knife I've always wanted to get my hands on, and I finally have. Um, I love the automatic version. I love the MSI version. Is that what it's called? The 
uh, the the FRN version, but this one here is the titanium. Oh, it's so luxurious and built like an absolute proverbial tank. I mean, Microtech is incredible. I need more Microtech in my life. That that sounds ridiculous, but I'd be willing to um, sacrifice some others for more Microtech. They're just built so sturdily. Uh, this is what their Ram Lock, which is akin to, but uh, kind of different. Here, you can see it here, uh, to a crossbar lock. It's more like a cross slab lock. Let's see. So when you pull this back against that spring, so that's a coil spring there instead of omega springs. You pull that back and it releases. But you see that's a giant block here with a notch in it that locks into that back notch. So uh, sort of uh, in, in how you use it, it's like a bar lock. And it's fidgety like a bar lock. It seems like it's incredibly strong and then housed in this really incredibly strong handle. I mean, you've picked this up and you can feel it. It, it is substantial. It's like when you uh, when you pat someone on the shoulder, you're like, hey, man, how you doing? And you're like, oh, wow, he works out. It's the same thing. You pick this up. It's like, oh, wow, this could do anything. Um, all that said, I got to say, I have a problem with the choil. The choil is so large. This is a Borka design. And uh, I think I think uh, Mr. Borka makes some absolutely incredible knives. Uh, the, his designs are, and, and execution, if you look at his custom knives, are exquisite and very tactical. I've always thought that the blade to handle ratio here was off. Maybe not the blade to handle ratio, but the cutting edge to handle ratio, kind of like a strider. So if, you, if I do this, the blade to handle ratio doesn't look that bad if I if I sort of obscure the cutting edge. But as soon as I reveal the cutting edge, it seems like a small, it almost looks like an ax head if you if you kind of turn your head in a certain way. Uh, all, all of these make this a unique and um, unique looking knife and also a great knife to use. I am talking about looks. I'm being superficial. I understand that because you hold it up here and it's incredible. Um, it feels really good if you hold it up in the choil. I just, yeah, yeah. So this is one of my, it's like Seinfeld. You know, she had man hands. That there's just, I'm, just, I'm just trying to come up with excuses so that I don't have to buy this knife. Just like they were always coming up with excuses so they don't have to date people. All right. Oh, one thing I wanted to talk about here is the clip. A hit and a miss, big time. Uh, in the hit department, it's got that really nice Sebenza style uh, bent clip with the with the center partition. I really do like that on my Sebenza. But my gosh, it's like they went out of their way to put FU screws in there. Look at that; those screws are so. T I mean, they're they're ridiculously tall. They they went to the effort to create a notch uh, to set the the clip in to make it flush. They even went to the effort to uh, make a. A, um, a cover on the other side, but then they put those damn screws in there. It's almost like they're thumbing their nose at you. I got to say, and, uh, but I'll take it. I'll take it from you. Microtech. I'll take that numb, uh, that thumb nosing. Cause this is such a sweet, sweet knife and you make such sweet blades. All right. I'm going to put this down. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Next up the new Jack Wolf knives, midnight Jack. The Midnight Jack, I think, I mean, this is just anecdotal uh, from, from what I observed. I think that this is their all-time favorite. I think this is their all-time most popular slip joint. Um, and I, I also think that led to the rave, raging success of the After Hours Jack, the, mid, the, the flip, front flipper version of this knife. Um, but this is such a great knife with that amazing... Um, drop a uh, sheep's foot blade here and uh, that coffin shaped sleeve board handle just an awesome knife and i know that when it on the initial run of this when there was my carta here i have my my first one here in my carta m390 and a machine ground satin here we have uh g uh, um Twill carbon fiber, dark blasted titanium bolsters and s90v with a hand rub uh but what I was saying is when this first came out in this version, they had the the purple haze carbon fiber that 
is beautiful. I get why people, but people just go gaga over it. And that knife sold out in a heartbeat. And, and then the whole rest of the line sold too, super quick. Also at the time he wasn't producing as much. Um, so they were a, a little, a little more rare. Um, but you have your chance again, five different handle materials. Uh, this twill carbon fiber is super classy. Um, it's not that basket weave carbon fiber that I don't like. It's, it's twill. And I love the way it looks, uh, on the canine jack, it's the same, same kind of material that I have on the canine jack. And it, it has a really nice, uh, in hand feel as well. Um, but it's sort of tuxedo like it's sort of, uh, dressy to me dressy carbon fiber uh, but they also are offering this knife with jigged titanium a raw jig titanium uh, a carbon fiber that's black and white i can't remember what they call it but a, a fat carbon that's black and white and then this really interesting swirly uh, material that reminds me a little bit of fordite but it's not fordite um, so beautiful beautiful knives go over there uh, to jack wolf knives to check out your options and there you can find all the dealers um, that that sell these and uh ben belkin of jack wolf knives has really expanded the reach and capacity of his company and is able to make more knives and uh get them out to a, a lot more places real quick let me show you the artwork on the tube check this out very very nice midnight jack i love that lettering it's so cool it's sort of art deco sort of uh like I guess in way back in the day, they'd say like an Oriental style art deco, uh, Oriental just being like loosely Asian. Uh, I guess that's not what we say anymore, but I would be like an Occidental. They would be an Oriental. All right. Uh, lastly, here we go. This was a really nice thing I got uh, this past weekend from my buddy Ian. Uh, this is the Emerson Tim Kennedy knife. And man, it is so cool. So I got this in a trade uh, with Ian. He held a three-hour um, seminar for the martial arts he teaches, uh, Mastro Defense System. And uh, I got to say, I've been uh, I've been out of martial arts training for uh, the better part of this past year, and three hours really, really took it out of me. Uh, but the the uh, the shining point is, I walked out a stronger individual, if not uh, more bruised, and I walked out with this in my pocket. He wanted to trade. He got in touch with me. Hey, I'm doing the seminar. And also, can you bring your holdout three serrated? I'd love to trade it for, you know, will you trade it for an Emerson Tim Kennedy? And I said, hell yes. Uh, but you're, you know, I'm way making out on the deal. So I also gave him uh, the night horse, um, the, uh, the G10 version of the night, night horse by Dirk Pinkerton and beyond EDC. So two really combative blades. He loves the, um, the holdout three. That's the six inch cold steel holdout with, uh, uh serrations. Uh, the guy that he trains with has used it to great, uh, effect in combat. Okay. This one right here, it is a long, nearly three. It's a like three and 3.8 inch clip point blade, but I love how subtle the clip point is. This reminds me of a fighting buoy, uh, like the Hell's Bells. Uh, you got a long, slender blade with the clip, with the long clip, a place to put your thumb right on the back. And uh, actually, I can't even really reach that. I guess I can if I do it like this, but um, you got this uh, nice thumb ramp as usual. And the 800 pound gorilla in the room no wave this is my only oh, no, no no the elvia came without a wave also i was gonna say this is my only emerson without a wave i mean to me that's the emerson uh usp is that wave having that wave but it's not the only thing i go to emerson for and i kind of like not having the wave on this uh however when i pull it out of my pocket so far i've been doing the same thing i do with all of my waved knives, if I'm not trying to wave it out, is oh, pull it out like this. So I'm pinching the handle so as not to catch that hook. But there's no fear of that in this case, obviously. Actually, I tried to wave it off of this uh, thumb disc, which you can sometimes do with some thumb discs. But this finger guard here got in the way. The finger guard is what 
is what held on. I like the size of that finger guard. Obviously, a um, an on-purpose move, a, a deliberate design move. I really like it. You know, Emerson is known for his ergonomics, and finger guards always play into that, but this one is just a little bit deeper, and uh, I love that. If you don't know who Tim Kennedy is, um, very interesting guy. He's a Green Beret. He had a career in the UFC. Um, he's a, an, a, an analyst, you know, you, you can see him all, uh, numerous episodes of the Joe Rogan experience and all over the place, uh, really, you know, super badass kind of guy. And, uh, one of those guys, he, st he was like still an active green beret while he was fighting in MMA and all that stuff. So one of those kind of type A dudes, but he also has a fixed blade of this similar design with a longer blade coming out from Emerson here real soon. So uh, exciting. I'm so excited to have a new Emerson. It's been a long time. And you know, I was burned when, when, uh, when Joe, the guy who used to go as the knife whisperer stole two of my Emersons. Uh, that was, uh, that was heartbreaking. Uh, so I'm building back. All right, let's get to 10 great automatic knives. This is just an update. Uh, you've seen a lot of these, but I realized uh, since the last time we did this, I've gotten rid of an, uh, a few of them and acquired a few. So I, I come in at a nice round 10 automatic knives in my collection, uh, which is great for a list. Uh, but also, if you want to keep a sub collection in control, I feel like 10 is a great, great number, though five is <laughs> is even better. All right. So first up, uh, the ProTech Rockeye. This was my first uh, modern automatic. Um, I say modern because I've had a number of tourist automatics from Europe, um, over the years. And I love those for their sentimental value, but they're, they're pretty crappy knives. But this, when this came out, um, I was really into Les George. I mean, I still am. And I was very much into the VSEP. Uh, which was the big knife at the time. People were calling it the Sabenza killer. And to me, I, I thought it was way better looking and more appealing than a Sabenza. But I could not, like most people, get my hands on one. And then, uh, Les George licensed his Rockeye design. The VSEP was uh, the mid-tech version of the custom Rockeye. Anyway, he licensed the design to ProTech. And uh, that's it's been about 10 years. And uh, since then, it's been history. It's been one of ProTech's most successful lines, resulting in like infinite uh, different variations of this large size and then of the small size, the SBR uh, and uh, the fixed blade version, the, the small and the large fixed blade version. So uh, this has been a very, very successful line for ProTech and for Les George and and a great way to get an amazing design in hand if you don't have the time or inclination, the time, money, or inclination to hunt down a VSEP. Actually, hunting them down is not as difficult as it once was, uh, but there it is, the ProTech Rockeye. Next up, we'll see if I can do this. With, yeah, I can with my left hand. This is the venerable... Ultratech, Microtech Ultratech. And the way I saw it when I got this uh, and my other out the front or my other Microtech is why would you not get a dagger? If you're going to get an out the front, why would you not get a dagger? Because folding daggers are very, very hard to come by and expensive. And these are not, I mean, they are expensive, but they're not hard to come by. So, and, and it seemed to me to be the most safe and secure way to have a dagger. Uh, one thing I love about the Ultratech and the Troodon and the other uh, Microtech out the fronts is that they make great pain compliance uh, devices when not deployed. And no, I have not used it as such, except in just noodling around with friends. Uh, well, Ian, uh, and it's that right there. It's the, uh, first of all, it's the shape. This acts as sort of a, um, a, uh, sub hilt almost. And then you can cap the top with your thumb and you can use that glass breaker, uh, not only for striking, but for, uh, digging, digging into flesh pain compliance. So I, I really like that. This is kind of a multifaceted tool weapon. Um, and if you do carry it as a tool, 
you're going to be in good stead. Just don't just be aware that it's double edged. But the, the great thing about it is this M390 has great edge retention. So if you're taking this on the I, I don't I can't imagine someone would actually take this on a construction site, for instance. But you could use this knife hard on the one side with that uh, wonderful sharp M390 blade. And then when it starts to wear out, flip it over and use the serrations or use the serrations for strap cutting and other stuff and ropes. And this would actually make a really great tool um, for work. But you look at it and you think it's also extremely dangerous. So maybe, maybe not. But you go to uh, Home Depot and you can find those uh, duct knives that are daggers, basically, and, and uh, insulation knives and stuff like that. It's, it, it's all the same. It's just lesser materials and lesser engineering, but um, you're dealing with double edges. So uh, that's what you tell the cop when he says, oh, my God, what is this you have in your pocket? He says, it's for work. Uh, I use the front edge, and then when it gets dull, I flip it over. One thing I love about the Ultratech and the Troodon is that when you do flip it over and use that top edge, uh, this is something you'll only get in a dagger. The ergonomics here are awesome, actually. They're almost better than this because uh, the, the actuating switch is now on the bottom and acts as a finger guard for that forefinger. And then this awesome and very sharp um, jimping that's milled into the handle is further forward for your thumb and that's a natural posture uh, for the hand grip so i dig it that's why ultratech double edge next up this one was on my keychain for a long time and i loved it i might it might go back there though i've, I've decided i'm not doing knives on my keychains right now it's still a little too much bulk and weight but this is the uh, kershaw launch nine uh, they are up to 18 or 20 20. They're up to 20. That new launch 20 is very handsome. Uh, looks like uh, it looks like he's uh, dressed up to go duck hunting the way the. But anyway, this this one here is <laughs> I'm starting to sound like Biden. But anyway, uh, this one here, as you can see, is wearing a beautiful anodization that's been worn at the edges. Uh, that was the result of having it on my keys. Uh, that was a deliberate move. I knew that that was going to happen and I wanted it to happen. Uh, because I love how that looks, but I just don't carry knives uh, enough regularly. Like I don't carry the same knife uh, regularly enough to have them wear in like that. So I just decided pop this one on the keys. You'll have at least one uh, that's like that. But really nice CPM 154 blade with the fuller. It's a very futuristic looking knife. Comfortable little handle on this and just incredible snappy action. I think Kershaw is uh, really making a nice little comeback. Uh, I think it kind of started maybe with the knockout and then and then and then the link and the other a uh, couple other uh, American productions. And then when they started in with the launch line, I think they really won people over like a, a broad, a broader audience. And now they're releasing knives with ball bearings and doing some beautiful stuff. I got to say uh, this Iridium has been one of the one of the best knives i got in 2023 it has the best bar lock bar none oh, in my collection i will say it better than my microtech or better than my um bench maids and better than my hogs it's the best okay next up this is from boker this is a little little guy uh, this is the shamsher and interesting thing is a shamsher is a large curved uh, like sword and this is not this is a cute little uh, automatic um, and Berno designs here Arno wait where, where is it here Berno born so a collaboration there's that rocket that's pretty cool love that swedge drop point blade very tiny uh, knife here but here it's a liner lock here but it has a hell of a kick like you really have to push the pommel into the fat of your thumb when you pull and yeah there you go nice little little edc here i rarely carry this to be honest um but now that i have it in hand i, th I think i should pop it in the fifth pocket more often i wear jeans a lot and i never <clears throat> never put anything in there uh, this would also be a good drop in the pocket 
uh, because it has no clip, drop in the pocket knife with a fob on the end of it. Yep, this is a little cutie. And if you look at the uh, blade shape from here, let me flip it upside down. I feel like when you look at a knife upside down, you can see its contours better. But look at the dipping down edge and the recurve. This is actually a really good cutter. Uh, and the overall arc of that blade makes the, the diminutive, diminutive size of it uh, kind of null and void uh, for a small utility knife. So that's the Shamsher from Boker Knives. Next up, uh, one that I got off the secondary market years ago uh, from a farmer in Texas. Uh, this is the Protec TR2. Um, it came to me all gritty and I was able to clean it out. It had some really fine sand uh, in the pivot and I was able to get all that out of there. And um, it had a little bit of wear, but not much. I have put most of the wear on this knife. Something about receiving it from someone who had already used it hard made it easy for me to have in my pocket when we were painting my daughter's room or whatever. By the way, that paint just will not come off, <laughs> which I would like it to. But it's on that really nice knurling. Um, as I mentioned with the Microtech uh, before, the these when you mill out jimping in aluminum, as Microtech and Protech do, it is so sure. It's so sharp, not sharp, but so grippy. Uh, and on this knife, you don't have much of a guard, but you have this widening out towards the blade with all of this uh, cut jimping in the aluminum that this would make a great thruster without having to worry about sliding up. Plus, you have this big swell uh, for the fingers. And then you have the same thing up here, jimping that really helps Keep that sucker in hand. Uh, also, I'm a big fan of the knurling on the sides here. Uh, they just add to that grippiness. Um, 154 CM blade steel and just kicking, kicking action. Just uh, if I had fat on my arms, which I don't, I'm incredibly lean and muscular. Herculean, you might say. But if I did, uh, all of that fat, I would feel it shake on my arm. Uh, standard. Emerson slash um, Benchmade style uh, three screw clip there. So you can, you have a lot, a lot, lot, lot of options for replacement clips uh, when you're dealing with that clip. All right, next up, this one is from Hogue and Doug Ritter. Uh, this one I've been carrying a lot recently. This is the R Auto RSK Mark I. Uh, you know, I've shown this off quite a bit. This is Magna Cut. And now I have three blades, I believe, in Magna Cut. Um, and I can't say that I can really tell the difference. However, I happen to have Magna Cut on two exquisite blades that I carry somewhat frequently. Uh, the Model 2 from American Blade Works and this right here. And they are both really awesome blades, uh, really well ground. I, I have no doubt that if they were in 154 CM, they would still be incredible. And I probably wouldn't be able to know the difference just due to my own cutting uh, and knife usage. Uh, but again, with the with the Hogue, you have this really nice contoured G10 handle uh, with the radiating um, sunburst pattern coming out that's nice and grippy. Uh, but on this side, uh, what I do... Okay, so I've complained a lot about the Hogue clips. I, I felt like they're too light a gauge metal. And I think on this, it's a little bit stouter. Um, so I'm sure I'm not the only one who has mentioned that. So they, they probably, uh, okay. Again, we're running into that screw issue though. Look at that. Those screws are not only button screws. They're like, they're square button screws, just like that Microtech. They're not even domed so that you can hope to slip your jeans over that. Uh, so that's the one thing I, I feel like at this point, you know, you, you can't be doing too much of that, guys. You're going to put that loop over clip on a tactical knife where people have thicker pants or you, car hearts because you're a working person and you're going to use this uh, knife on the job. Like those are going to make it difficult to retract. As you can see, I actually, this is not even uh, on purpose, but you can see cloth from my jeans stuck on the screw there. So come on. 
Come on, guys. Uh, but that's my one gripe, my one gripe. And uh, I, I don't, I don't want to overdo it. Here we have a, uh, what do you call it? Um, a lock, which I must admit, um, I don't like. I pull it out. It, it, it sits more proud than the button. And it's taken me some time to build the muscle memory to go for the button and not the lock. But overall, this is an awesome knife. And I like it even better than the straight up uh, bar lock version of this. Uh, speaking of bar locks, Hoag's is the able lock. That's the advanced bar lock enhanced or ambidextrous bar lock enhanced. Okay, four more here. Let's check this one out. This is the Microtech Troodon, a wee little knife at three inches, but man, does it pack a deadly punch. Um, I love the shape of this knife. And uh, I love the serrated and plain edge blade like you have on the Ultratech. This is, I always thought that this was a particularly beautiful part of the knife uh, with that upward slant. And even though it's those pain in the ass proprietary screws, I have no plans on taking this apart. So I love the way they look on this. And then that Eagle Talon. I love the Eagle Talon logo. I actually have a sticker of that on my car. This one. This old girl sometimes uh, has to be uh, blasted out with oil. Uh, it gets it gets sticky. Uh, or if my hands, if I'm not real sure with the deployment, it'll stop. And uh, so so it's a little it's a little finicky. We'll say finicky. But again, another great uh, Kubaton style uh, pain compliance device without the blade open. Uh, the jimping here also excellent. You have it on the peak here in the middle. And then at the tail end and the front end, really nice. And then, of course, that actuation um, lever there is nicely jimped so that your thumb really catches on that as a thumb ramp. I also like this jimping on the sides. It looks kind of like gills on a shark, um, but it also adds, adds in the grip uh, greatly. All right, next up here is the Protec TR3. I've talked about this knife a, a lot here. Um, I originally wanted it with the fish scales, which I think is really cool. Uh, the fish scale milling on the aluminum handle, uh, I believe was inspired by the, its use by Navy SEALs, maybe. Uh, the legendary and mythic Navy SEALs, thank God we got them, like all the rest of you service members uh but they didn't have that at the time and actually i'm glad they didn't i like this better i've kind of grown away from the fish scales uh maybe you need to earn the fish scales maybe not but the grip on this is awesome these uh the fluting on this handle really uh gives your finger your fingers as they wrap around great great spots to nestle in get that fat nestled into those those fullers and you have a great blade, uh, great handle shape, great ergonomics. This angle here at the pommel nestles into the palm perfectly. Uh, and I have a feeling like the bigger your hands get, it's it's still going to be, it's still going to nestle in there very nicely. My hands are about medium sized, so I get a full full four finger grip. Uh, most most people will. I mean, look, there's an extra whole pinky on there if you hold it in in uh, hammer grip. Uh, but just this taper from thinner to wider towards the front generally uh, just makes it feel really sure in hand, kind of like a, a SOCOM or a Yojimbo. You got the finger groove here and the guard and a 154 CM blade that cuts amazingly. These Protex cut, I haven't even mentioned how well they work. Uh, this one has got has gone through the most work. For sure, but I've carried this and used this quite a bit. And man, their blades are awesome. And I love one, uh, this is uh, 154 CM. I love 154 CM and CPM 154. And I think that ProTech, who uses it quite a bit, I think they really have heat, you know, nailed that heat treat. Um, again, you might say, How would you know, Bob? But uh, it, some 154 cm you have to sharpen more often than others that i do know from experience all right penultimate knife here this is this is my uh celebration of the legality of automatic knives in virginia knife 
I got this on January 1st, 2021. Uh, and it's this beautiful Manticore X four inch recurve. Uh, that's L Max. I don't have too much L Max in the collection. Um, really great action on this knife. Uh, you can feel that there are ball bearings under that actuation there. It just slides, slides forward pretty easily. Um, and then you have, uh, you have more of a Dirk Pinkerton style scoop edge jimping here. Um, which I like less than the full. I kind of wish it just spanned the entire handle. Um, not that it's absolutely necessary. It's a big enough handle uh, that you can really get a, a, a full four finger grip all the way behind that switch and have your thumb, you know, fully extended and still and still not. You're not going to go anywhere. You're not going to be sliding up. So maybe that full groove jimping isn't absolutely necessary, but I like it for feel. Um, I like the fact that the top of the actuation switch here is knurled instead of jimped, and uh, it really gives you great grip, those little pyramids. And I would imagine if you have leather gloves on, they're going to sink right into that knurling and find great purchase. One thing I love about this that you almost never see on automatic uh, blades here is the jimping on out the fronts. So you don't see it. And I like it because... Well, I like it because I like to put my thumb on the back of the blade, but there's one little gripe about this knife, and that is the rattle. It's got some rattle. You know, all the automatic knives, all the out the fronts, unless you're getting a G and G Hawk, have a little bit of rattle. But this one has a little bit more than a little. It's got a little bit more rattle than the Ultra Tech, and it it's a strong knife it's i don't think it compromises anything it's just annoying and when i put my thumb on the back i can feel the blade move you hear that so it's almost like i wish they didn't put the jimping there because then i wouldn't be tempted to put my thumb there but you know these are all first world problems and i love everything else about this knife it's wickedly sharp it's got an incredible recurve blade that is not difficult to strop, um, and I don't think it'll be difficult to sharpen if that day ever comes, uh, which I doubt it will. Uh, kind of an uneven grind at the tip, though. I want to show this. Let's see. It's a little fatter on the show side. Uh, so, you know, maybe something you don't expect on a $300 knife. But all in all, Pretty awesome. All right, last up in this list, a big one. This is the the venerable Kalashnikov. This is the XL Kalashnikov Bowie blade. And uh, yep, I love this thing. This was a gift from Lavender Pants. Uh, haven't seen Lavender Pants around in a while, but he was a great guy, or probably still is a great guy. And um, he just gave me this knife out of the blue because he had it, and his wife didn't want it around uh, the little children. So he sent it to me to be around my little children, and I gladly accepted it. Girls like it, and one day they'll get it themselves. Uh, nice big D2 blade. Um, very, very sharp. I love the – it's tight as hell in there in the in the uh, pivot. There's no play, and yet you get this big walloping uh, slap-out action. Uh, the Kalashnikovs have really, really great ergonomics. Very neutral little bit of a choil, but I love the uh, the clips, the wavy clips. They echo the the um, handle partitions here and feel really good on the palm. So there you go. Uh, they have a bunch. Boker has a bunch of different automatics. Here's one. Uh, I didn't feature it here because it's uh, this was given to me by Dave, and uh, I think he may have taken it apart or something, or in the factory they didn't. They were missing a washer or something. This is a terrible one. But on the whole, Boker has a lot of really great uh, automatic knives. Uh, do be sure to check your local laws. Make sure that they're legal where you live. You don't want to get pinched for an automatic knife. That would that would just be suck, sucky. All right. For Jim, uh, let me just say, before we get to that, uh, tomorrow night, be sure to join us. Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we're going to be doing that Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway. We've got... Uh, We've got that Grizzly to give away. Coming up on Sunday, the great and powerful Michael Janich. 
a designer of uh, the Yojimbo, the Yojumbo, the Ronin, all those awesome knives, but also head of uh, special projects at Spyderco. And my God, what an interesting guy. I mean, he has done a lot of really cool stuff in his life. And uh, he's a good person to talk to. So join us then. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.